Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Hole in the Sphinx The Great Sphinx of Giza is by far one of the most iconic ancient megaliths in the world. The archaic monument was built an estimated 4,500 years ago and stands guard in front of the pyramids of Giza. And yet we know very little about the statue other than its age. According to historian Dr. Bethany Hughes, the Sphinx is full of secrets. She believes that hidden underneath the statue is a potential treasure, one that can only be reached through a hole in the side of the Sphinx that everyone seems oblivious to. There is a small opening at the base of the Sphinx near its tail that Dr. Hughes claims could be connected to a large chamber underneath. Nobody knows exactly where the tunnel finishes, and no one is about to start digging up the Sphinx because that would be far too dangerous for the monument. However, the hole is clearly there for everyone to see. In 1998, the Supreme Council of Antiquities was behind an excavation to see what was hidden beneath the main body of the monument. Egyptologist Zahi Hawass claims there are several natural cavities underneath, which the tunnel could lead to. They admitted there could be other unexplored cavities below the structure accessible through passageways that have likely collapsed. The whole thing is a major mystery. Some even say there is a hole in the head of the Sphinx, which leads into a hidden chamber inside the body. Although that's never been proven either. Number 9. The Sphinx Before the Flood Let's talk about the Sphinx's erosion problem. In the 1950s, French Egyptologist Schwaller de Lubitsch speculated the Sphinx's body had been eroded by extreme deluges of water. The erosion on the bottom of the Sphinx is significantly worse than the erosion on the pyramids, making it seem as if the Sphinx could be a lot older. In 1979, another expert on Egyptian history, John Anthony West, attributed the erosion to floods. John speculated the floods occurred between 15,000 and 10,000 BC. It was his firm belief that a much older civilization created the Sphinx a civilization we haven't even heard of before. The dating of the flood damage correlates with a lot of estimates for when the biblical flood ravaged the world. In the Bible, the flood was sent by God to rid the world of wickedness, which had taken root since the fallen angels started messing around with human women. Many biblical archaeologists have suggested the flood took place about 12,000 years ago, lining up perfectly with the flood damage on the base of the Sphinx. It could very well be that the Sphinx had nothing to do with the ancient Egyptians. It could be the only surviving example of architecture from humanity prior to God's flood and Noah's Ark. And now for number 8. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Rakuya and Isaac Musal. Thanks so much for watching and supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. Number 8. Secrets of the Atlanteans What if the Sphinx is hiding a lost repository of knowledge left behind by descendants of the Atlanteans? This was a theory put forth by clairvoyant Edgar Cayce prior to his death in 1945. Edgar was the Nostradamus of the 20th century. During one of his trances, he had a vision of refugees fleeing the flooded city of Atlantis and then burying their secrets in a vast hall underneath the paws of the Sphinx. He believed the hall would be found before the 20th century was over. Sadly, the mysterious Hall of Atlantean Records was never found, and it's currently the 21st century. But that doesn't mean Edgar was wrong. One of the prominent theories among conspiracy theorists is that the Sphinx was once part of the city of Atlantis. The theory claims Atlantis was in fact Egypt, and that the Great Flood destroyed everything in their civilization except the Glorious Sphinx. This would account for the flood damage along the base of the statue. Then, when the flood waters receded, the Atlanteans came back and buried their remaining knowledge underneath the only monument still standing. The Hall of Records was sealed to safekeep their wisdom. Then, as time wore on, the Atlanteans forgot who they were. Many believe the truth of their lost civilization is still hiding beneath the body of the Great Sphinx. Number 7. The Second Sphinx An Egyptian tourism official recently revived the old claim that there was once a second sphinx standing guard outside the pyramids. Director of Public Relations for the Giza Pyramids, Rida Abdel Halim, told Cairo Live that he discovered a statue in the area similar in size to the Sphinx. The statue is nothing but a ruin underneath some sand now, yet Halim claims it was once marvelous. 
he went on official record to say the second sphinx once stood 66 feet tall and 240 feet long. The discovery was made with help from a supposed team of experts with Egypt's Zagazig University. They confirmed the existence of a statue near Giza that is completely covered in sand. And yet at the same time, famous Egyptologist Zahi Hawass refuted the claim, calling it media fanfare. At this point, nobody has presented real, irrefutable proof of a secondary sphinx. But this story has been around for a long time. There are rumors that the Sphinx once had a twin, and that together they guarded the entrance to the Giza Plateau and the fantastic pyramids beyond. It isn't such a stretch to think the second Sphinx was destroyed and covered up by the desert. Do you think there was a second Sphinx? Let me know in the comments! Number 6. The Romanian Sphinx The Busegi Mountains in Romania hold some of the most impressive natural beauty in all of Europe. But here, in this remote mountain range, is something else that has stunned people across the globe. What some say could be a giant sphinx hundreds of miles from Egypt. There is a rock formation here which resembles a human face, and that scientists say was likely shaped by wind erosion over thousands of years. However, other theories claim the rock was carved in the likeness of a sphinx by the ancient Dacians. The Dacians were a Celtic people who thrived near the Black Sea starting around 80 BC. They were heavily influenced by the neighboring Scythians and came into power after destroying the Celtic tribes who lived in Romania, Moldova, and a small part of Ukraine. This wasn't so long ago that the Dacians would have been unaware of the Egyptians. If mainstream archaeologists are correct, the Sphinx had already been standing for 2,500 years. The Dacians undoubtedly would have heard of it before, and may have even met Egyptian merchants traveling through their territory. It could be that the Dacians learned of the Sphinx and tried to build their own, crafting it by hand from the stone. However, they botched the job and it wound up being a disfigured chunk of rock. Others have suggested the Sphinx in Egypt is connected to the Sphinx in Romania through an underground tunnel or even that the Romanian Sphinx was built by a group of wandering Egyptians. What do you think? Did traveling Egyptians build a Sphinx to remind them of home? Let me know your thoughts in the comments! Number 5. Levitating the Sphinx People have been debating how the pyramids of Egypt were built for centuries. The Romans didn't know, the Greeks didn't know, and we still don't know today. Mainstream science has pushed the narrative that the Egyptians used a massive workforce to construct the pyramids using ropes, ramps, and pulleys. But what if that wasn't the case? According to an ancient Arab historian from the 10th century, the Egyptians used levitation to build everything from the pyramids to the Sphinx itself. The historian was Abul Hassan Ali al-Masudi, also known as the Herodotus of the Arabs. He traveled throughout the ancient world documenting people, architecture, achievements, and science. In one of his volumes, he wrote that the great stone blocks of the Egyptian pyramids were moved using a magic papyrus. The Egyptians would place a piece of this mysterious paper underneath the stone, strike it with a mysterious metal pole, and then the stone would move along a path about 150 feet. There seemed to be some limitations to the levitating technology. Egyptians had to repeat the process over and over until they could get the stone exactly where they wanted it. The pyramids were already 3,000 years old when the historian wrote all of this down. We don't know if he got his information from an oral history passed down through generations of Egyptian builders. It may have been just a fantasy, or he may have really seen levitation in action. Number 4. The Avenue of Sphinxes there are sphinxes all across Egypt, not only at the pyramids in Giza. The truth is that Egyptians had an extreme obsession with these creatures. One of the best examples is the Avenue of Sphinxes in Luxor. The Avenue of Sphinxes was used as a processional walkway during cultic activity starting around 2,300 years ago. Researchers believe they were built by King Nectanebo I between 380 and 362 BC. This is because many of the over 700 sphinxes lining the avenue have his face, just like how the sphinx at Giza has the face of Pharaoh Khafre. These sphinxes combine the body of a lion with the head of the king. The avenue connects Karnak Temple and Luxor Temple, spanning 1.7 miles. 
I sent 700 sphinxes, but that's only the number of sphinxes still standing. Originally, there were likely over 1,057 statues lining the avenue. It would have been a truly incredible sight to behold. There were also three different kinds of statues. One of the stranger kinds was a sphinx with the body of a lion and the head of a ram. These ones were built during the reign of Tutankhamun. Number 3. The Alien and the Sphinx There is a mysterious papyrus with a very long name. This funerary papyrus was painted by the ancient Egyptians 3,000 years ago, and it could be normal except it has a strange image on it. It's currently on display at the Cairo Museum in Egypt. It appears to show the sky goddess Nut being held up by Shu, god of the air, and He, the ram-headed god. Underneath Nut is Geb, the earth deity. But in the bottom corner of the painting is a small image of the Sphinx. So unassuming you wouldn't even realize it's there at first. Sitting on the back of the Sphinx is what can only be described as an alien spaceship. The object painted on the funerary scroll has legs like a tripod. It's shaped like a disc and has a little bulb on the top. It looks like a tiny flying saucer, and it even has rays of light coming off it to show that it glows. I mean, it's definitely how we picture UFOs in the modern era. So what in the world is the spaceship doing sitting on the back of the Sphinx? This is a question nobody has been able to answer. The picture is ancient and shows no other evidence of alien life forms, and yet it clearly depicts a UFO lounging on the back of the Sphinx. Sure, the object could be a bug or a plant, but why would there be a plant growing out of the Sphinx's backside? The truth is that although the Sphinx has been estimated at 4,500 years old, it could be much older. There is a lot of erosion on the Sphinx that seems to suggest it was drenched in centuries of rain starting around 10,000 BC. Was the world completely different back then? What does all of this mean? Some think that it indicates alien ships were just a normal part of everyday life 3,000 years ago. What do you think is actually painted on the papyrus? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Number 2. Face of a Lion We know by now the Sphinx is not entirely what it appears. We don't know how old the monument truly is. We may not even know who really built it. And we certainly don't know what's hiding underneath it. But now, experts are saying the Sphinx isn't the original finished product. It could be that the Sphinx originally had the head of a lion, not the head of a pharaoh. What even is a Sphinx? A Sphinx is a creature from Egyptian and Greek mythology that has the body of a lion and the head of a human. There can be boy Sphinxes and girl Sphinxes. They are just mythological creatures like minotaurs. The Sphinx standing outside the pyramids of Giza has a face that is supposed to be a likeness of Pharaoh Khafre. He was born around 2570 BC, the son of Pharaoh Khufu, for whom the Great Pyramid was built. Archaeologists know this because they have found other statues of Khafre in the area. He was very frequently depicted as a sphinx. Historical architect Jonathan Foyle, who recently undertook a project to learn more about the sphinx, says its head and body are out of proportion. He and his colleagues believe this could be because the head was altered. It may have originally been the statue of a lion, not a sphinx at all. This supports the theory that it was built by a much older civilization. Then, when the Egyptians found it, they built their pyramids around it and Khafre replaced the lion's face with his own. Do you think the sphinx could have originally been a lion? Let me know in the comments! Number 1. Zeb Tepi Zeb Tepi was, according to ancient Egyptian texts, the time when gods ruled the planet. From the primordial chaos at the beginning of the universe, the gods appeared and went about creating humanity and the world as we know it. Several researchers, including Armando May, believe this to be a real historical period. We know the Egyptians likely believed in this because of writings found scrawled on Egyptian monuments, left behind in temples, and painted on walls. One of the most intriguing documents is the Papyrus of Kings, which contains the names of the rulers of Egypt in the 19th dynasty. In addition to the names archaeologists already know about, the list includes divine kings from the mythical age of Zeptepi, when Egypt was ruled by deities, not just men. Historians have had a very difficult time separating fact from fiction. Egyptians truly loved their mythology, 
and they appear to have blended reality and myth in much of their early writings. Either that, or there really was a period in time when Egypt was ruled by much more advanced beings. The ancient writings say the gods came down from the sky about 36,000 years ago. After them, there was a period that demigods ruled. That was about 16,000 years ago. Then, as the demigods began to fade, mortals took the throne. As you can imagine, this theory and others like it have been rejected by mainstream scientists. But there are those academics out there who firmly believe that Egypt was the cradle for a much earlier society, for a group of gods who ruled the land long before men. The Sphinx may have been one of their monuments. Since some say the Sphinx is significantly older than the pyramids, it could be one of the only remaining structures built by the original kings of the Nile. Thanks for watching! What do you believe is hiding beneath the Sphinx? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye!